at 509. Tide at 4.05 p.m. And so the mobile on Wednesday, high tide at 12.23 a.m. Low tide at 3.31 p.m. That is a shot! <laughs> Uh-uh. No! <laughs> Alright, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are back out on the boat today. We got all salty swigs. We got Tanner, the Dolphin Island man himself. What's up, fellas? About to go ahead and drop a little slow pitch, Jake. But what we're out here to do is some deep dropping. And we're targeting some fish that I have never caught before. We got the Tanacom. I know some of you are going to comment, this is not real fishing, you're cheating, but we are in 1,000 feet of water, and it's a long ways to reel up. We may try to hand crank a couple fish if we get on them good, Tanner just because. <laughs> yeah, he's already on a jig, but uh, he's he's not a girl like I am, so I'm going to stick with the electric reel for now. But we got some squid, we're going to drop it down, see if we can get on a couple of these deep fish. Again, fish that I've never caught before. If we get on them good, we did bring a grill. We're going to do a little catch and cook out here on the boat. Another thing that I've never done. So a lot of firsts today is what we're trying to do. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, go down right now, hit that subscribe button. Salty Swigs is also almost monetized. Yeah, buddy. Head on over to his channel, link down below. Go show him some love. Thanks, y'all. But uh, we're going to get the fish and see what we can get on. Let's go. So Tanner just got done dropping his jig. And uh, for whatever reason, my screen was not reading our depth. It finally picked up and we're in 899 feet. And he had a jig just at the bottom. Took like at least five. At, at least five, probably seven or eight minutes. What size gram of jig is that? It's just 300. 300 grams. That's some oh, deep water for 300. Up and down, bro. It's, it's cold. It's really That's slack. crazy. Not a lot of current. We are like in a neap tide right now, too. So we got it's slick calm out here. There's no current, which sometimes can honestly be bad for fishing. I think bottom fishing, what we're going to try to do with the squid over here, not going to be so much an issue. Um, but it, the current definitely affects some of the fishing. Like yesterday, we went out sword fishing and there was no current. And I do believe that probably messes up the bite a little bit. Those fish do want some of that current. It's going to be moving bait around, stuff like that. Just like if you're fishing the beach, pompano fishing, you want some wave action just to kind of stir things up. Yesterday was a struggle with the swordfish, except my man Matt <laughs> hooked into the dang white marlin. Yeah. I'm so going to run that little clip for you all. We got a few jumps out of them. It was pretty freaking sweet, but... Yeah, that was awesome. Hey, that is a shot! <laughs> Let's go! Dude! Hey, on the slow pitch! No oh, way! Come on! No freaking way! Close, 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 close. Close, Renee. That is so Dom's cool. Dom's got camera. Dom, are you on? Yeah. Gonna Let's break. go! It's gonna break me off. No, no, we no, got him. Won't. We got him. We got him. We got him. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Dang! Dang. No freaking Dude. way, bro. <laughs> that was insane. Let's go. Swigs is getting everything set up, and we're going to run y'all through the, the leader and everything we're using and uh, get to fishing. All right, y'all. So the gear here is a Tanacom, a Daiwa Tanacom 1000 spooled with 80-pound braid. And then I've got a 200-pound mono top shot tied with an FG knot. About, uh, I want to say I put about 50 feet on there. And um, then we've got it crimped here at the end with some chafing gear. And the chafing gear is so I can take this light with this long liner clip and clip it on here. And that's the underwater attraction light. It just um, turns green and like blue and pink and purple. It's all multicolored. Comes to a snap swivel, snapped, uh, everything's crimped on here. This is all 300 pound mono. And then it goes to 10 aught demon circle hooks. These are by Mustad. There's five of them coming all the way down here to um, this five pound lead. And this is a 80 pound swivel down here. So if I do get snagged on the weight or something, hopefully that um, swivel can open up and I just lose the lead and not the entire rig. So that's the deal here. And um, once we start dropping and stuff, we'll kind of show you how we do that. 
Heck yeah. Now, a lot of the stuff that we are using today, we do sell at Beach Realm Outdoors if you're interested. And we also have some pre-rigged deep drop rigs. So if you are doing any deep dropping and you want to get some of those pre-tied rigs and not do it yourself, we do have some of those available. And we got some of the electric reels as well. So if you're interested in any of that, um, I'll link it all down below. All right, y'all, we got a whole squid on each one of the hooks, as you can see. Just piercing through the top of the mantle once. And um, we are just going to send it. Send it. Like so. Got the little line counter up top letting us know how deep we are. And there goes the leader. All right, it'll take a minute, y'all. So we'll see you on bottom. All right, guys, we just got to bottom. It is a 324 revolutions. I like to let it lay down on bottom gotcha. for a minute. And. Um, just let it sit there because you created like a big plume of mud when that five pound lead <laughs> just crashes and hits bottom. So um, we, it has sat there for a minute. So I just lock it up and don't reel on it and just kind of wait for the boat to come tight on it. All right. And see if you can see any taps. Because well, they may tap, be tap, down tap there roof. hitting it right as soon as it hit bottom. You usually know pretty quickly if they're there or not. For the most part, yeah. Um, I'll work an area for like five or 10 minutes and then maybe move like a quarter mile to a mile, like depth change. Yeah. So you'll make maybe a hundred foot depth change, either shallower or deeper. Sweet. And then we'll just tighten back up on it, take it off bottom. Drop it back. Just kind of let it sit there and bang. All right. And we're fishing. <clears throat> now we're just watching that rod right there, waiting on the waiting on the hits, and all we gotta do is flip a switch. It is kind of like cheating, especially with all the work Tanner's gonna have to do over there. A whole lot. It'll be worth it if you get one though. I know. I'm already working. All right, we're starting to get a bite. There we go. There we go. We're off. I guess this doesn't count as my first drop. The first drop here. Well, I had to show you everything, <laughs> and like it was a coaching thing. You had to show me how to flip the switch. Because it's really not just, it's not just sitting it and leaving it. Right. Like, you gotta kind of. We move the boat quite a few times. You have yeah. to come up and come down, and you have to lay it down and let them see it. It's. It's not as simple is, as drop it and it, leave it. There is a little art to it. There's some there technique. Really There's some technique for yeah. sure. It's a good but, sign though. We've only been fishing like five minutes. Right. We only got fish on. Tanner's over there. I ain't even got a bite yet. Working his little heart away. He may get a bite soon though. <laughs> he may get a bite soon. Because his jig's coming over where we just were. So. Yeah. We got uh, 266 rotations left. It's going to take a minute. I'm not going to bore you all with this entire thing here. Yeah, it'll take about five minutes, yeah. three to five minutes. <laughs> Do you usually catch like doubles, triples, or is it usually doubles. singles? I've never caught a triple. He's never caught a triple, so the day the goal is for me to catch a triple. I like it. We'll, we'll get a bite, set the hook, and drop it back down. <laughs> and Because we're greedy. Yeah. Try to load the stringer. 200 left. We'll see if they actually taste good. They fight the whole way up too, I the guess. The whole way up. No matter Which is kind of surprising. And they'll come up blown up. Oh, Eyes yeah. blown up and stomach. If and you did still cutting up. Yeah, if you didn't know, whatever, like the pressure is so much down there. When we bring them out of 900 foot, they're like eyes explode and all kinds of stuff. So usually when you're fishing in this kind of deep water, there's no regulations on size. Right. Because pretty much anything you bring up, you're going to kill it. So. And we can keep how many per person? It's 20, so they're a reef aggregate. They're part of your reef aggregate, okay. and they're a reef fish. And they have, don't have any size limits, and then the creel is 20, 20 per person. 20 per person. Is there a limit on boat, or? No boat limits no. or anything. But, but we don't, I mean, we're, we don't really we're not keep, keeping. We're not keeping that many. We're definitely not keeping that many. I, I just want 15, enough to. we're probably going to call. Yeah. I just want enough to do a little catch and cook on the boat, and then take some home, let Kelton try it as well, so. Yeah. It's incredible fish, y'all. It really is. We're getting close, though. 70 left. Got Thanks. deep color. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the right one. Here it comes. It's blowing up. Look at all that air bubbles. I don't know if y'all can see through the camera the air bubbles coming up. Watch this.
Nice. It really didn't blow up that much. No, sometimes they don't. Interesting. Yeah. And so that oh, golden right. tile fish, yeah. pretty little thing. They live down in the mud, yep. which is kind of weird. Do they have white meat or is their meat kind of dirty? Oh, it is. Like lobster. So lobster. Right. They do have a really small bloodline. Okay. Um, so it's not like scamp or something where it doesn't they have They got some blood. gnarly teeth too. Yeah, they really do. So if you catch big ones, yeah. or even this size, don't go sticking your fingies in there. <laughs> Would this be considered average or small? This is or probably average. Average size? For what I catch. Yeah, like Sweet. 20 two to 24 inches. I mean, it looks like you average. get a decent fillet off of it. great fillets. And look at Perfect. the fillet on there. Yeah, that's a beautiful fish. All right, unhook that thing. Let's drop it back and All right. time for me to catch one. About to send another drop down here. And then take the lead in your hand. You like toss it out a little yes. bit? the lead. Grab the lead. Because you don't want that hook to come back. Gotcha. Maybe... All right. Um, oh. Is it in preschool? Yeah. yeah. All right, sending her back down here. Long ways down. It's gonna take about five minutes. All right, let's see if I can get on my first golden tile fish. What's the state record golden tile fish? Do you know? I wanna say it's like 40 pounds, probably around 40. Yeah, 40? Like high 30s, 40. And what was that one like? Four? Yeah. <laughs> well, I want a 20 pounder. My goal is to get three at once and a 20 pounder today. All right, guys, we just got down to bottom. We're going to bump forward just a hair. When that weight hits, it makes like a huge cloud of the, the mud and stuff. So we leave it there for a second. Reel up a hair. No, you're good. Just oh, lock it. Just lock it. So you leave it right on bottom. Yeah. You reel lays, up a hair, drop it back down, lays, reel it up yeah, a hair, yeah, drop it down. And just kind of start smashing it and it creates commotion. So instead of like snapper fishing or something, when you hit bottom and reel up a few cranks, we're actually letting even more line out. That way every bait uh, actually lays on the bottom instead of up and down. What I'm also gonna do, after I get my three at once and my 20 pounder and my yep. one on the slow pitch, yep. is I'm gonna hand crank one. Okay, on the electric. On the electric. That's one to one. Yeah. So it'll take forever. <laughs> <laughs> like 11 inches of <laughs> Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> Two hours later, it's gonna be that green-eyed shark. Maybe we, won't, maybe, maybe we won't hand crank. <clears throat> my GoPro overheated. I had to restart it, but we just got on again. So we got it coming back up here. Well, of course the GoPro overheated again, but we almost got my fish up. Tanner also has one on the slow pitch jig. Maybe, it's a, maybe. It's gonna take him a little bit longer to get up than, than me over here. It's like stupid hot. I, I don't usually have too many issues with GoPros overheating, but I got it mounted like right in the sun. So we got uh, 30 more revolutions. I'm gonna put it in the shade over here for a second. It's hard to get out of the sun right now. I know, there's, there's a lot of sun. Sure. Here we go, here we go. I see the color. I see the color. Come Down. back and then come back up. And then come up a little more. And then it'll stop and then you hand crank. Now hand crank. Heck yeah. Oh, look at that. Is that that shark you're talking about? Shark. So we did double up. I got the golden tile. He got the green eyed baby shark. All right, y'all check that thing. Oh, look at those eyes there. I guess it's like that because it's so dark down there, but that is kind of a cool looking shark. But my other GoPro overheated again and uh, I'm gonna have to let it cool off for a little bit, but got the first tile fish, marked it off the list, got him in the box. We're, uh, I'm gonna show you one off a little bit later when we catch something bigger. Um, we just got another drop on the bottom. Uh, see what we can get on this time. Yeah, my buddy. Need some jumbos. See if I can get the little thumpy thump on camera this time all right we are on again got another fish coming up on the electric reel this was nice set it forget it let it come <clears throat> tanner's back on bottom jigging again trying to catch something other than a shark right i mean this is a lot of effort <laughs> i'd prefer if it wasn't a shark that'd be nice i don't see it <laughs> nah it's a little far down there oh. tanner's on we're doubled up again this is the same thing last time. Once we got hooked up on the electric, Tanner got hooked up. Tanner's hooked up. That was a You're much. Let's go. That was a much better fish Just than that shark. And, so. and chit chatting. That was a good hit. Yeah, that was nice. That thing loaded up. That should bro. be the right one. 
We'll catch back with you in 25 that minutes. Was cool. <laughs> <laughs> Three hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We just hooked up on the electric. 200 cranks left. I may have to drop a jig. I don't want to reel up that far, but it would be pretty sweet to catch one on the slow pitch. It's really not that bad. Bro. Yeah. I mean, it sucks, but like. It's not like you're catching giant fish and you're cranking up like the a. Reels make it really easy. It's not like you're, you're reeling up a 50 pound like grouper with that. 49 foot. inches of line per crank. Yeah. That's a lot. Somebody let me know what is 900 divided by 48? That's how many cranks he's got. <laughs> <laughs> Too many. I know. Check line over here. 170. We're getting there, boys. All right. She's almost here. Got the deep color. Oh yeah. Tanner's got a good one on the other side. Come to papa. Big ol' air bubbles. Nice. Another one. Might be the biggest one of the day so far. Oh. Heck yeah. Yeah, buddy. You getting close over here, bud? Have the hey yo. Just wrapped up. You just brought it up backwards. 900 foot. It's a lot. That's why. It nice good. work. Yeah. Fish, bro. Oh, it ain't coming off. That is crazy. 900 foot, and it's still fighting when it gets here. Right. Like that's insane. And he brought that up manually. Yeah. That one's got the big old eyeballs. No, I think there. it. I think it fell. I think that hook just fell in there. Yeah. Sweet. Can't wait to try them. Yeah. They're incredible. All right, we're gonna rig up some bait again. Drop her back down. Trying to get on a big one. All right, y'all, I may regret this. We got the uh, squid dropping back down on the electric, but I'm gonna drop down the slow pitch. See if I can catch one in 900 feet of water. I mean, that was 20 pitches. It wasn't a lot. Okay. I really don't even know how much line I have on this reel, so. Find out, bud. Find out. Hey! I made it. Awesome. So are you just finding bottom every time? Is that all you're doing? Yeah, bouncing yeah up pretty much. Drag it like this and like parabolically kind of drag it around. Yeah, you felt how hard it was to get it out of the mud? Yeah. Pretty much that every time. Okay. We're fishing, boys. I'm basically just letting this jig slam in the mud, pull it out. Something I don't do very often. <laughs> oh, we know. <laughs> Alright y'all, we got one on the slow pitch jig. Now uh, we have bumped forwards a little bit so I got more than 900 yards, 900 feet out. Uh, it's gonna be fun. It's not a sprint. That's true. <laughs> no reason to try to get up here super quick. It's not a sprint. We got the fish on, so. That's awesome, man. First deep hey, drop, can you grab me slow that? pitch. Seems like every time the electric reel gets hit, that's when the slow pitch gets hit. I agree. They got one coming up right now. I think when those fish hit and they're like freaking out over there on the squid, it uh, fires up the other ones that come out and start eating, so. You are 100% correct, sir. Solid theory. Uh, are we there yet? <laughs> oh, God. Y'all can no longer tell me I'm a little girl. Is it pulling Drop at all? Drop the slow pitch. It's not really pulling, is it? Okay. It's not even halfway there. Nope. Talk about work, y'all. Golly. How you doing, Tanner? I got a shark. Uh-oh. Tanner's got a shark on the electric, which means I, too, could have a shark. May have a shark. Like well, I said, honestly, I don't even care if I have a shark. I think I was on you. Did you just touch the boat? And break off yeah what just happened do you have braid over there he just broke off yeah it just went right under up. the boat and then snapped no look at that thing got a shark with a weird parasite eat it no that was on the shark whatever that is that is gross all right so the only thing i can think that may have happened on bringing that fish up was if it got tangled with the electric reel or maybe got like hooked by one of the hooks or something. If that braid hit the boat when that fish got up here, because it basically, I broke off 
right when your fish got up. I never saw your line, but that is a good explanation. If, if that doing. braid got hooked on his leader, and then he got up here, and my braid nicked something on the bottom of the boat, and then oh. everything just fell back down. And so that's why we could have never seen the braid on the on the rig. Otherwise, I don't really know what else could have happened to, to break me off that close. Because it was, it, it was definitely off the boat. Right. Um, so I'm not really sure, because those fish are generally coming straight up. But we got the electric reel going back down now. Swigs is hooked up on the slow pitch over there. We're gonna we're gonna fish this spot for a little bit longer and see if we can get into any bigger ones. If not, we're gonna bump out closer to a thousand foot, hit the four digits, and see what we can catch in some deep, deep water. All right, guys, back on bottom again. We're gonna crank up just a hair. Get this weight out of the mud. Right there. Let it bounce for a second. We'll leave it here for a minute. If we don't get a bite, we'll drop it back down. Just kind of do that same thing. Drop it, pick it up, drop it, pick it up. Oh, oh. There it is. Got him. Oh, yeah. He's on there this time. Per <laughs> Tanner was just saying five minutes if we don't get bit. And we got dead, so. Like five we love it when that happens. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Instantly. I'm still trying to decide if I'm gonna drop another jig or not. I'm a little what? salty after what happened. All right, we should be seeing color. It sure looks like it. It looks like the one, the only. On. Cut my camera on. Get him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, y'all, we are almost up. Brad just got. Woo! All right, check it out, y'all. Golden tilefish. That one was barely hooked. I literally just pulled the hook and it popped right out of its lip. Check out those eyeballs blowing up like that. These are an absolute beautiful fish. Swigs is just getting his up. T Did you get off, Tanner? Dang. Tanner was on but pulled the hook, but I cannot wait to try these fish. We're gonna drop it back down, see if we can't get a few more. Then we're gonna start the grill up, have us a little uh, catch and cook out here on the boat. And then I think we're going to head in and maybe do some uh, grouper fishing, maybe hit some wrecks, see what else we can get into. You on? Tanner's on. Get him, son. Get him, son. We doubled up. Doubled and then we got up. Tanner on it right here. Triple Tanner's up on, the, on the golden tilefish. Yours, yours is a little bit bigger than mine. Yeah, well. Dang it. You know, that's what she said. All right, y'all. Swigs is letting me use his slow pitch setup. We're going to torture myself again here and uh, see if I can actually land one like at 900 feet. Hopefully we have a little more success this time. I think we are drifting just enough and I should have moved like both of y'all moved I wanna and I didn't. All right, if you're on, I need to hurry up and get the bottom and then I'm gonna be on. on. It takes forever to get the bottom. All right, I'm on bottom. So I should have a shot at getting hooked up here based on uh, how the day is gone. I'm on, I'm on, yeah! I'm on, I'm on, let's go, all right, now we got about a 15 minutes ahead of us, you're definitely going to want to come to the back soon, yeah, all right, Swigs told me about this cool trick, instead of having to do the line lay with your hand, you just rotate the reel side to side, which I thought was genius, I'm sure most of you, if you slow pitch a lot, you probably already knew that, I did not know that, and uh, definitely makes it a lot easier. Super cool trick by old Swigs himself. Not me, but... Well, you told me about it. Yeah. This is a heavy fish, a little bit. I mean, not like insane. Yeah. But, I mean... It's a good fish. It, this feels better than the last one. The last one, I think, was just a shark. Well, Brad's hooked up. Oh, oh. pitch. Head shakes. I gave him my combo that I just caught those two uh, tiles on. Yeah, you did. That was appropriate. My man. Yeah, and you're dropping a 320 gram jig, y'all. So that's a pound. So you're dropping a one pound lure all the way down the bottom and working it and faking out a fish 900 feet away with an artificial lure. That's it's cool. insane when you say it like yeah, that. That's really cool. I don't care what fish it is, you know, that's just cool. Imagine. And you're doing it with 20 pound braid and a 40 pound leader. 
Imagine Crazy. Being 900 foot high on a building. Yep. And looking Dude. down in the distance that that yep. is, that you just hooked up on that thing. How, insane. how tall is the Empire State Building? How, why would I have that <laughs> random fact <laughs> in my head? Somebody comment down below, how high is the Empire State Building? Is that 900 feet or is that like 200 feet? I don't know. Right. So it's usually 10 foot per yeah. story. I don't know. So how many stories is the Empire State Building? If y'all know, it's, down it's probably not 90. Or, or is it? I don't know. 100, huh? A thousand hey. foot? Hey. Big fish? Oh, we got one on over I feel like I'm getting close. All right, I am going to have to move. You were after the 11. We got a double! Oh, shit. Oh, shit. You're in the motor. I don't know where my camera is right now, but drop number two on the jig and I got another issue. I might have not ever had a fish. I might have been tangled with him the whole time. Ah! I do need to try to get this out from under the motor, though. No, there we go. There a fish down there? Oh, there, there's a fish on here. I just felt him. He's got to be close, right? Look. No. Were, were you slap full? Didn't hook up until after the electric reels. There's definitely a fish on the end of here, though. All right. Well, I'm tangled up with the uh, electric rig here but I can feel the fish on the end of this. I, I do still have something there. Swigs is untangling it at all right now. What a disaster. What are we cutting? All right, we just about have this mess undone. I still feel the fish fighting over here. Sometimes this happens. So You're jigging and deep dropping and there's super yeah, I mean, low current. We're in 900 foot and we got three lines down like. They end up getting not, like right next to it. Yeah, did we get it? Is that the last one? Uh, right there. Bam! All right. Yep, still got a fish. <laughs> Heck yes. Hey, Gamakatsu 510. <laughs> uh, kept them, kept them pinned. Those are sticky, huh? This is insane. Apparently. Talk about running into near disaster while you're 900 foot of water offshore. Yeah, we we're about to chop everything. We ended up just spending the time and getting it all untangled. I, like, I got color. I got color. No, you don't. I made it happen. <laughs> no, you Double! don't. No. Double! No. Ah! He got a scorpion <laughs> and a tile. No wonder. Oh, dude. That's awesome. Both of them are small, but well hey. Well done. That, I mean, that was worth it right there. Doubled up on the slow pitch jig in 900 foot of water. Oh, got tangled up in the electric rig. Holy crap. I, I said I wanted to double today but i thought it would be on the five drop rig not on the slow pitch check it out y'all got the tile fish and the scorpion fish i don't know that can you eat scorpion fish do they get bigger so. Just be careful he's uh if you're touching it. he's a little small so i don't think we're gonna get anything off of him tile fish is kind of small too but uh how crazy the the tile fish was actually foul hooked one hook in each side the scorpion fish must have been the one that ate but how crazy is that? That's awesome, bro. All right, just brought the uh, no. deep drop back up. <laughs> another tile fish there. We're absolutely whacking them now. We're going to make another drop here, see if we can get it some suggestion? more. Between the three of us, we, we're not loading the box. We're not keeping limits by any means, but we are trying to get enough for everybody to take home for some dinner. I know my buddy Adam also loves trying new fish. He's never had tile fish. I've never had tile fish, so if we get enough, I'm going to give some to him as well. So. Make sure to share with everybody, but we're gonna make a few more drops and we're gonna take it to the house, do a little catch and cook. There he is, there he is. Oh yeah. We on. Oh yeah, he's still on there. Hard mouth. I hear you. Nice. Got a couple minutes till he gets back up. Uh, we'll see how big he is when he gets here. All right, we are just about up with the 12th tile fish of the day. Assuming that's a tile fish. Assuming could, so, yeah. <laughs> could be another shark. We should have color coming up here in just a second. Here it is. Oop, there it is. Oop, there it is. What is it? What is it? A hake. Interesting. Southern hake? Is that, it looks, I guess it's in the same family, huh? Appears to be. No. No? Okay. That's in the eel family? Okay, kind of gross looking. Yeah. Supposed to be good to eat. They are. You can take that one home. Very uh, interesting looking. Look, still, oh, yeah, I can tell a little bit by that tail. 
Still kind of looks a little similar-ish, but. All right, Southern Hake, new species on the boat. First time I've seen this one. All right, sending her down. Y'all comment down below, is the fish comb gonna work? We about to find out, boys. Down, down, down she goes. Where she goes, nobody knows. Well, we kinda know. All right, she made it up. Which bait is she gonna be on? Fish gum, Ooh, fish low. gum, fish gum. What's that over there? Oh, that's the air bubbles. It's not on the fish gum. That's a nice one. Dude. Biggest one of the day. Ugh. Heck, yes. The fish gum didn't do it. That's all right. That's all right. Another pretty tile fish. Most of them have been on the bottom, but this one is on the top drop there. That's a fatty. They are pretty. Heck yeah. All right, y'all had an awesome time out there with Matt and Tanner catching the tile fish. We also caught some trigger fish. I don't know if I'm gonna work that in this video or save that for some extra footage for later, but really good day offshore. Caught quite a few fish. Got one of the tile fish cleaned up here. Super white meat. Everybody I've talked to said that tile fish reminds them of lobster. So I've never had it. This will be the first time, and uh, we're just gonna season it up with a little bit of garlic salt here and see how it turns out. Hey, what's up? Oh, Brad's on a phone call. Um, My dad on the phone call. I think all we had to have was... No, we had to get that inspection. That's what it was. I wouldn't, wouldn't really think so. I mean, maybe. But because like it's already been inspected and approved, so I don't know why they would have to do that again. But I'll talk to him and try to... Yeah, I'll try to skip all that. Alright, see you. We, uh... We lost our, or we got a fine for not renewing our live bait license or something. Apparently, it expires on September of every year, not a year from when you get it. So, always fun stuff in the tackle store. We got the tile fish seasoned up with a little garlic salt. Got the pan heated up with some oil here. We got Ryan Kelton always whining. He's like the whiniest boy of all. No, not Daddy the bait. But uh, it was really cool getting out there, dropping jigs in 900 foot of water and hand cranking all the way up is uh, it's definitely some work, but it was pretty fun. I think I'm probably gonna have to invest in an electric reel and uh, do some of that more often. It's only like 40, 50 miles out, um, so not crazy. Um, I think we ended up burning like 200 took, bucks in fuel, so. It took three minutes for the bait to get down and also two hours yeah. to get there. Three minutes just to wait on that jig to drop. Pretty crazy. All right. The tile fish is done. Looks delicious. It does kind of resemble lobster a little bit. Kind of a firmer, starting to flake a little bit, kind of meat. Super white. Again, this is just some garlic salt. It shouldn't like overpower the flavor of the fish. Dude. What? Is it bad? It's like butter. Is it bad? Melt in your mouth. Oh, Try it. It does have that firmer texture like lobster. So good. Hey, that's my yummy snack. Get your little piece, bud. I'll stand up in a minute. I'll take. Gotta have it with ranch. Gotta have it with ranch. You can't not try it without ranch. Up. What do you think, Knox? You like it? Hey, 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 hey. Is it delicious? Oh, it's so good. Definitely gonna have to go back and uh, catch more of these one day. That it does actually melt in your mouth. Oh no. If you've never caught towel fish or never had towel fish, it kind of melts in your mouth like, like butter. Get butter. it on a menu or something, many restaurants, but if you ever get the opportunity to go catch them. Oh, so and good. not taste right milky butter. Mm, mm, mm. Dad, and also if you're noodle. fishing yeah. for them, you have three days for the thing to get down. To uh, it's kind of weird because these fish like bury themselves in the mud. They call them mud guppies of the sea. And uh, mud, guppies. mud guppies. They live in the mud. And there's no telling what they're eating down there, but Daddy. You, you wouldn't think something that lived in the mud would be this white and flaky and delicious, but Turns out it but is. But I one time I touched one though, did you? Yeah. Daddy. Take you like two hours to reel it up. Dad, 
But this is black ice can probably go. It was like almost 1,000 foot deep, the water. So that covered more feet, more water than lions. I know, it's crazy. Tell yes, this fish is delicious. <laughs> Definitely uh, get you something if you have the opportunity. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Always a good time there out there on the water. Perfect conditions, super flat. Uh, we're in the process of moving. So this is probably the last kitchen cook you're gonna see in this kitchen. Next one will be in the new kitchen, hopefully. So uh, got a lot of work this week, but we're in a three bedroom now, going up to a five bedroom. So a lot more space with all these kids running around here. So looking forward to it, but hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Until next time, y'all take care.